I'm Sean Fennessy, and this is The Big Picture, a conversation show about what happened to Furiosa. We're <laughs> diving deep into Furiosa today with two legends of the wasteland, Chris Ryan and Joanna Robinson. Hi, guys. Oh, hi. What's going on, man? Thanks for being here with me. Um, how are you all feeling on this so, not so sunny Tuesday oh. morning after uh, we experienced Furiosa. Feeling great about the world? I'm frankly disappointed that you decided to not go with the Furiosa like smear of black paint that you had on earlier. <laughs> oh, that is actually a yeah. sick look. Yeah. yeah. I had to I cleanse you could pull myself. It off, no, but no, no. I went okay. to a Morton Joe. I negotiated for some water. <laughs> okay. I cleaned myself up to be here with you guys today. Uh, Chris, how are you feeling? I'm doing okay. It's been a long weekend at the Citadel, but you know, the aquifer is pumping. Nice. You've done the work once the again. Content. The aqua yeah. cola. Are the breeders ready to breed for you? Uh, we're talking about Don't Furiosa. So fast. <laughs> you always go like, so early. Zero yeah. to breeders. <laughs> but when I when I see you, I think of a full life. Uh -huh. You know, I think yeah. of a full life. Furiosa. I mentioned this on the episode last week. Really, my most anticipated movie in like five years. Um, yeah. Maybe more. I, I was really, really, really excited for this film, and I I think I I think I was a little bit of a downer on last week's episode. Oh, you know, okay. because uh, I was I had too much Fury Road on the brain. You know, I was a little bit too psyched out how much, by how much I love that movie. Well, how much is, of that is informed by now in reaction to the low box office, you feel the need to champion the movie? It's a, it's a good question. Um, you know, at the beginning of this episode, I actually had a monologue where I was like, you know what? It's okay. It doesn't even matter that this movie wasn't a big success because yeah. I'm, I'm starting to reframe how I think about movies. But that's big. When something, it is big. Money, yeah. money doesn't matter. Are you po you're uh, a post? I'm post money. Box office? Yeah, I'm post okay. money. Yeah. Less movies, less money. Yes, and yeah. I've been telling Joe Biden, I too am post money. Um, I no, I think that it's not that I need this movie to be considered like greater than it actually is. I think I stand by exactly what I said, which is that this is a really, really, really good movie. Yeah. Um, it is not the like pinnacle of cinema that I think of Fury Road as, but I, 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 I. I have to assume we haven't even talked about this movie at all that you guys both really liked this and I know you both really like Fury Road yeah so I'm I'm glad that you're here to kind of like help me walk through some of the details of the story so let's just begin at the beginning like Joe what, what did you think of Furiosa I'm actually closer to you I'm more hmm. aligned with you um I liked it I didn't love it I really wanted to love it and um I also got hyped up by the early reviews that were sort of over promising I think this whole idea of uh, it's better than Fury Road. I was like, what are you actually talking about? It's definitely not. But y you and I did an episode on 3,000 Years of Longing and George Miller's last movie, which I think I liked a little bit better than you, but we both agreed was like visually stunning and quite messy. And I would I would say the same about this movie that it's visually stunning. I do want to champion people seeing it in theaters, though. Like, I really think it needs to be seen on the huge screen with incredible sound. The same way we were talking about Dune 2. Like, I really want people to go see it. But know that it's not going to be Fury Road. And that's okay. But it's not going to be that. It's not going to exceed it. And it felt both too long. I think as you and Amanda discussed, it's the longest Mad Max movie yet. Yes. But also that significant chunks were missing, that there is definitely like a much longer cut that exists somewhere. So both too long and yet I felt like I was missing chunks of the story. Yeah, I think you're right. I, Chris, I've, I've seen you a few times this weekend and we've hardly at all talked about the movie Furiosa. Yeah, I knew we were going to talk about it here. Uh, I really, really enjoyed it. And it also reminded me that not no, no two Mad Max movies are the, alike, mm. uh, if you want to call it a Mad Max movie, which might be one of the reasons why people didn't go to see it is because it got out that there's no Max in it. But I think that... Are we doing full spoilers? Yeah, we're full. We're well, full yeah. spoilers. It's a Mad Max saga, but I would. There's no. He's there. Well, there, there's there, a, there is one shot. There's a dumb cameo. Yeah, there's, <laughs> there's, a, there's right. one. There's an Easter egg <laughs> yeah. in our Mad Max movie. Yes. Sure, but like I, I think generally yeah. speaking, there it, well, Jack sort of plays that role. There's not like a Max presence in it, but you know, Mad Max and Road Warrior are not the same movie, and mm -hmm. Road Warrior is much different. Thunderdome is much different than Road Warrior. Fury Road kind of created this new template that you thought maybe he could return to over and over again, but those are obviously incredibly demanding films for both the filmmakers and the performers, as we've noticed from several several interviews that Anthony LaJory has given. So I, I kind of went into it with an open mind. I can see, I, I can definitely see what you're saying where there's like, oh, there's a huge chunk here that I kind of wish, I almost wish like if we're going to hit two and a half hours, like keep me here for another let's 40 minutes and it. let's yeah. like tell the whole thing. Yeah, especially because it seems like, and I, I want to hear what you guys think about this too, one of the reasons to 
do this film for George Miller was kind of all bound up in the final speech that Dementis gives when he's confronted by yeah. uh, Furiosa at the end of the film. And this idea of like, can you make it epic? Like, can you take your story that you've been telling your whole life about yourself and who you are and what you do and put it on the grandest possible yeah. scale? Like Fury Road is a grand movie, but it's a two hour movie. It's a two hour action movie that takes place over one day. You know, uh, The Road Warrior is an epic movie, but honestly, like made pretty modestly and doesn't compare to like The Lord of the Rings or um, Gladiator or something like that right. that has that kind of scale. So it seemed like he wanted to do his version of a mega action epic. And those movies are usually three hours. You know, they usually, and there it does, you could make the case that there is like, maybe we needed more of Dementis' story and to better understand where he was coming from. Maybe we needed more of Furiosa's evolution to becoming the woman that she becomes the yeah. story. Maybe I, I needed more Praetorian Jack. I would have loved to have seen yeah. more about how he became the Praetorian driving the war rig. I think there's probably a feeling of scarcity for these films too now because they obviously take so long to put together and make and he is 80 and, you know, it's not like we're getting one of these every two or four years like a Fast Furious movie. It's like, no, this is probably 60 40 the last one of these so yeah. i think maybe even lower odds than that yeah. now after the performance yeah, yeah yeah exactly but to your point about the performance and maybe even the film itself i just want to say that i think we need to to get back to movies being good and that and i mean good lowercase g and what that a, that being oh. an okay experience of the movies because like yeah. i was thinking about this when i was at this is literally what i said okay good yeah, yeah i was monologue, thinking about yeah. this when i was at the theater on um sunday night I think it was. Yeah, Sunday night. And I was like, there, it was like half populated. Um, I had done a lot of like, oh, like, I don't, it's like, I'm trying to figure it out because I know the AMC movies start like a half an hour late. And so like, what time am I going to get home? And I was kind of be being annoying to myself. And I was like, what am I talking about? Like in 2018, I went to the movie like 50 times. Yeah. And I saw The Lodge with Riley Keough and it was like, fine. And I was like, cool movie. And went home. And like, <laughs> and we need to get back to like, Having an okay experience mm -hmm. of the movies and not every movie needing to prop up not only like an industry but like a American medium of storytelling. It's like they're here, you you know, they're gonna be in the theaters, they're gonna be on VOD, whatever. Like I understand that there's a lot of uh, existential questions facing the industry, but I think that a three star Mad Max movie is about as good as I a time I could have had on a Sunday night, personally. Yeah, I mean, I think the issue is that, I mean, I'm not saying anything anyone hasn't said before, but that the threshold to getting people out of their house, to your point of like, yes. how long does it take me to get there? Is everyone going to be on their phone in the theater? You know, do I have a kid and do I need to get a babysitter? Or how much is it going to cost? All that stuff. And do I have a really nice sound system and a big screen at home? And can I wait two weeks and I can see Fall Guy at home? You know, like something like that. And so that threshold is so high. And so then, yeah, the good the good disappears yeah. that you, something has to be extraordinary to get people out of the house. And, um, I don't, but I, I just think this is an extraordinary enough experience visually and like auditorily that I would urge people to get out of the yeah. house and see it if they haven't. What, well, why do you think that Miller, you mentioned he's nearly 80 years old now. Like, why do you think he wanted to make this movie? What was it about doing, framing the story this way? Well, I certainly think, I mean, just, you, you just reading about the making of Fury Road itself and he and some of his collaborators' conception of this world is like Fury Road was not the only story that they had come up with. And there's like comic books and video games. And he obviously was working on Fury Road from as early as 2000, like the late 90s, basically. Yeah, mid 90s. And obviously that story went through a lot of different variations. But even as he was making Fury Road, had all these ideas for an expanded kind of look at the wasteland. So I think that. He, there was obviously like just way more meat on the bone for him. Um, and then when you watch this film itself, I think especially in Dementis, there's a political commentary that feels very of the moment. And sometimes even on the too large of a nose of Chris Hemsworth, but it's like, it's on the nose, but it's like, actually like, man, I can see why you made this movie right now. So I think it has like an urgency to it. I, I, I get it. Yeah, I mean, so my understanding is that they wrote this entire backstory for Furiosa sort of when they were in the, 20-year process yeah. of making uh, Fury Road, which they only 
storyboarded, Mm -hmm. right? There was no script for Fury Road. They did this like massive storyboard thing, but um, that they had already written this Furiosa backstory. And in fact, I was revisiting um, Kyle Buchanan's great book, Blood, Sweat, and Chrome, about the making of Fury Road and rereading the part where they did auditions. And I hadn't seen Furiosa when I first read this book, but when they auditioned people, they had them use that Furiosa Dementis scene from uh, the end of the movie that you were just referencing it's described in the book as like F has been wronged by D and now F has the power and D, you know, they like didn't say who the characters were. They had everyone audition with that, like Renner's in there reading for Mad Max, reading from the scene. You could pick to be either F or D because they didn't gender them. But that scene was something that they used to like set the tone for Fury Road. So I think he was just like, I really want to see that scene. Mm-hmm. Like that scene has been on my mind for a, a really long time yeah. and I want to do it. But I think to your earlier point, Chris, about um, every Mad Max movie is different, which it is. And that's been some of the joy of the franchise. It's so it feels so loose. They don't feel beholden to a lot of continuity or character arc for Max or even casting for Max (laughs) when it comes to like slotting Tom Hardy. And it didn't feel that strange because each movie almost exists on its own. This is a different thing because you're slotting this in right before Fury Road. There's so much more classic IP continuity, it bleeds directly into Fury Road at the end of the movie. That is just, I know that Miller wanted to do something different with every single movie, but in doing something different with this one, he just played right into some of the traps of I, that we've seen in IP filmmaking, I think. You know, where you feel constrained. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think the biggest hurdle for me with the movie, and I saw it a second time with a sold out crowd on Memorial Day on, in IMAX, and I would say I liked it a little bit more, but maybe not as, mu- as much as I was hoping I was going to with a fresh slate in my what mind. Was, what was the crowd like? Were they amps? No. Yeah. Uh, it was, was pretty mine. muted in the yeah. room. And I, I think that there are like two sequences in particular in this movie that are the wowest of wows. Like the yeah. highest level of action movie engineering that I think you really can pull off in the movies. And at those times, people were pumped. I didn't feel the same investment in the characters and the story. And I just think that this is something that all prequels have to deal with, especially prequels that are not of the Prometheus variety, where they're like, we're 5,000 years in the past or 500 years in the past and on another planet. When you're telling a story that is in that tight continuity that you're talking about, it's really hard to not feel like, well, I just know what's going to happen. I just know she has to lose her arm. I just know she's going to survive. I know she's going to become Imperator Furiosa. Like, I just know where this is going. Like, there's no world in which Dementis wins <laughs> and then she dies. Like, that yeah. isn't the movie we're watching. Yes, but I felt like for myself, for the crowd I saw it with on Sunday, when it became apparent that there was actually a prequel to the prequel that we were watching for an hour, mm-hmm. that's when the air went out of the room. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is when people were when like... Anya Taylor-Joy doesn't show up How much is this about, like, this kid? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I don't know, like, <clears throat> it was never communicated, but it definitely felt restless as it was like oh, we're going to do like a whole thing with her. It's not just like a five-minute montage of like Furiosa when she was a child. Right. You know? it, it, there it, it is. There, yeah. You tapped in. Furiosa. Welcome. There he is. Paul Hogan is I here, guys. Furiosa. 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 doesn't show up until 50 minutes into this movie yeah. or something like yeah. that. That's like a big deal for like the vibe. It's like, it's like tip-offs at 5.30. Actually, it's 6.15. You know, I uh, I made a couple of mistakes in terms of the plotting when I was doing the episode on uh, last week, mm-hmm. and I it, like like a week had gone by since I had seen Do it. Do you want to apologize directly to camera? Yeah, just yeah. In case. Dear George, <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, Have you apologized to Amanda? Uh, <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> uh, never, and I never <laughs> will. Uh, but I think that part of that was because there was a lot to kind of keep in your mind, and also it didn't make as much of an impression on me as I had hoped it would. So when I went to go see it a second time, my hope was like I would focus more. Like I thought Act One. And this, there are five acts in the movie, was incredible. Yeah. The, the, the actual chase. motorcycle chase, yeah. the staging, the framing, the kind of like upsetting your expectations of what a Fury Road movie is, like, or what a uh, Mad Max movie is, where it was like very quiet and very, um, uh, like, the, the perspective from which you see the road is so different from the way that you would see the road in Fury Road. Like, it felt like kind of particularly upending what you thought this mm-hmm. movie was going to be. Very effective, very exciting. It was really acts two and acts four in the movie where I was like, do we need this? Which is sort of what mm-hmm. you were talking about. Now, I found more to understand and appreciate, and I thought that the confrontation between Dementis and uh, Immortan Joe at the at the Citadel was funnier, maybe, than I remembered, sure. and a little bit, but there was... Hemsworth is just, like, 
half of that is just gibberish, yeah, which is yeah. kind of delightful, actually. It's fun. He's having yeah. a lot of fun, yeah. obviously, with this part, and he's really well suited to this part. But those are the two sequences, I think, where the movie really slowed down for people. Yeah. You know, where after you have the stow and, and then later that you have the stowaway uh, war rig chase, which is Sick. just unbelievable. Yeah. And, and then you go to the next phase where it's sort of like Furious has been captured, but then she escapes, but then she goes back, but then she gets an arm and then she goes back to go find Dementis again. And yeah. then she has to go steal another car. And you're like, OK. Yeah, like, there's I, a really cool war that they skip. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And <laughs> That's the, the part man where I was like, "History man switches sides." Yes. How did that Very happen? Strange. Yeah. Uh, instead, Why did they we let get him live? we get the guy who is eventually in charge of Gastown, who spends way more time fondling his nipples in this movie than he does in Fury Road. <laughs> yeah. Like move figures around on a board. And yes. I was like, this the is people eater. This yeah. is very Game of Thrones season one where it's like, we can't afford a battle. And I'm like, you can't afford a battle, George. <laughs> but how do they, how do Morton <laughs> Joe and the people eater like manage their power within, you know, like there's a little bit of a, I don't know what's a, what's a I, good comp there. It definitely seems like a more open, like kind of House Judiciary Committee debate style, pop, like cabinet than I thought that, that a Morton Joe would be running. I thought he would just be kind of like, Here's here's the word from on high. You guys mm-hmm. execute this, but Scrotus and Rictus also chiming in with a lot of a lot of opinions. A lot of Monday a, morning quarterback. I have a really guys. important question about Scrotus. Okay, do you feel like he was created especially to be a Mikey Day SNL character, <laughs> or no? Great call. <laughs> I'm actually wearing my master's hat today. Uh, for Scabber Scrotus, we're trying to get him into Augusta National. Oh wow, exciting! Yeah. What, so what goes into that? He just needs somebody to stand as his sponsor. So he needs some plastic surgery. So Scrotus is your guy in this movie, clearly. Oh, yeah. I think have, he's really good. Do you have a, a, a person in I this have movie? a bit of an issue with uh, the continuity of Rictus, which is that, you know, uh, Nathan Jones, who's a performer who plays Rictus, yeah. who's wonderful. You know, I mean this with no disrespect. Like, his body does not look the same now as it did nine years ago. Yeah. And so it's a bit yeah. st- it's strange that he would get more yoked in the future. Because in, in Fury Road, well, he maybe is, he is jacked. The apparent death of Scrotus, because Scrotus is an in Fury Road. Yes. I'm sorry. I'm so yes. sorry no, I, for I your that. guy. <laughs> so, like, maybe the death of his brother, which I expected to happen in this movie, but didn't. Very but strange. Maybe that we happened off screen. Yeah. Yeah. Off screen. Who knows? Or maybe he's going to get his own movie. Who knows? Wow. But, wow. Um, Scrotus rises. Yeah. Scrotus, a Mad Max saga. <laughs> yeah. Who says no? But maybe Rick just just like channeled his grief through getting yoked, jacked. Well, well, so then, who is your little freaky weirdo from the George Miller world? Yeah, in this movie, the is it the Octoboss? Yeah, yeah, really the horns. Him. Yeah, I liked him. I liked the the little dude who who OD'd in the cabbage in oh, the, yeah. oh, the stowaway yeah. truck. Yeah. yeah, see, he thinks it's cabbage too. <laughs> so there's been some debate. It's a cabbage based economy, right? Is it, is it cabbage <laughs> or is it lettuce? You guys think cabbage? Uh, actually, I did look like like heads of lettuce. My my bad. I just just said I, just I think it's cabbage. cabbages. Imagine, there's, some car- there's a few carrots in there, too. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's it's a He's making a bounty, like a mirepoix bounty. sort of. Let's think about this. Like, imagine going to war for cabbage. Like, really? That's how bad <laughs> things are. Like, and this is... guzzoline and bullets. Yeah. The three, the triad. <sighs> the yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, but re-watching Fury Road after Furiosa, um, and, you know, you have that whole prequel thing of, like, do you want to know how she lost her arm? Do you want to know how this happened? Do you want to know how this? How did she get that gun? But for me, it was the... Because the uh, mortifiers, the guys on the bikes who are in Fury Road, I was like, oh, that's, I guess that's why they have horns. Right. Because they were just, you know. Following in, the Octoboss. Yeah, in, yeah. In, in honor of their, their slain their, their fallen leader. hero. Yeah. 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 I, I, I guess I'm, because of the way that you described it, I'm not really like too worried about not understanding the lore and the continuity. And so that's maybe part of the reason why some of that stuff didn't, I didn't feel like there was this payoff, you know, it wasn't like. I, I, I guess I ultimately felt similarly about the Star Wars prequels. You know, this is a very similar kind of like, and this is how Anakin became Darth. And I was like, okay, fine. <laughs> like, what about how exciting it was when he was Darth Vader? Yeah. You know, like that seemed more exciting to me. And I, and that, that could just be a personal hang up. That could yeah. just be, this is a mode of storytelling that ultimately doesn't appeal to me as much as I don't know what's going to happen next. Like that is maybe my ultimate excitement in going to see a movie. But there's like, you know, there's prequels like Andor, like sure. that as a TV show where we know what's going to happen to Cassie and Andor. Yeah. And I'm not at all feeling like I'm wasting my time watching this this show because you can you can be additive in that <sighs> sort of constrictive space. And for Furiosa especially because her character doesn't have much of an arc in this movie because she's a little badass when we meet her and then she just gets to be a slightly taller badass. Like, there isn't this, like, she was a soft, sweet girl from the green place and she got hardened by her time in the wasteland. She was biting, 
you know, gas lines as a child. So like I I don't know what evolution I saw for her versus like the first Mad Max movie when it's like he's a family man. Like yeah. all of this and, happens. And, and society then... itself is more teetering on the brink rather right. than in full scale post nuclear collapse. Yeah, that's the other thing about the movie that I think is a bit of a challenge for kind of your right, your common audience, which is just like this still does just look like the last world that we saw. It, yeah. it, even though that the framing of the story is very different, it doesn't look radically different from the last movie, which the lat when Fury Road came out. There was this sense of like we have never seen a movie that looks like this. Well, before. it also was like oh, so that's why this took you twenty five years. Is basically you were waiting for technology almost to catch up right. with what you wanted to do. Were you guys bothered at all by the the heavy use of digital and green screen in this movie? There's been some debate about that. Uh, I don't think it was like as. I don't think the film was in anywhere close to as dynamic or as uh, groundbreaking as as Fury Road. I didn't really notice it being. It wasn't a distraction for me, was it for you? Not distracting, but I noticed it. I think yeah. you can freeze frame any second in Fury Road and you feel like you're looking at a piece of art and that's not necessarily true of Furiosa. And there is, yeah, some like overt green screen happening. But it does also still feel, especially like in the sequences that work, like in the War Rig Praetorian Jack sequence, which definitely had plenty of digital stuff going on, but like that just feels, I was thrilled yeah, yeah like it was thrilling I felt like I was watching Paul Atreides ride the worm like I was just like here it is this is cinema this is what I'm here for I felt yeah. the same way about the um ambush at bullet tongue like yeah. I felt like even though there's obviously a lot of VFX going on that was what Miller does where you're like I know where the gate is and I know where he's going yes. and I know where the cranes are and like I you, that's like when you're like you're using your entire imagination and your imagination is being met on the screen because you can see it all kind of like playing out in front of you. Yeah, you can. I mean, I, I'm so interested in the idea that his editor, Margaret Sixel, is also his wife. Yeah. And they've been yeah. in this partnership forever. But in all of the action sequences in all of these movies, and I think she's cut all of them, maybe maybe only four of the five. <clears throat> there, there's a coherent geography yeah. to the action that is so opposite of what most contemporary action movie sequencing is like where they're almost trying to disorient you and not make you understand how things are working to surprise you yeah. with images whereas in, in these movies you it and they're not shot from the pov of the characters like you're seeing the wider world you're seeing like many shots that are expansive and then close-ups and then expansive and then close-ups but you never you never feel confused in a place like the bullet farm where we've never been like we've never been yeah, inside of that space. Yeah, I was just while we were killing time before the pot. I was just watching like some Mad Max scenes on mute because uh, I didn't want our coworkers here at Spotify to hear but me. That's listen. how George Miller wants you to watch yeah. Mad Max. You can watch them that way. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, you can watch the Bullet Farm thing and be like, "Oh my God, the gate came down and she can't get it up." But what is she going to do? Because she if she goes in, she's only going to have a bike, and it's like it has like everything you need from visual storytelling is right there. Like, you can tell the emotional stakes and the physical stakes just by looking at the compositions, which is, like, that's, like, how you make movies. And yeah. that's... Sadly, I wonder if that's something that, like, we should be celebrating more, that this is something that this guy is almost singularly... I mean, him and Spielberg and a couple of other people are, like, just absolute geniuses at doing. But that's, that's like, something that Furiosa slightly gets away from because, um, like, George Miller, self-taught, filmmaker has said that he used to watch films without the sound mm -hmm. to understand not just silent films but like any film he liked without the sound to understand how the visuals could tell the story uh he likes to cite that hitchcock quote of like i like to make movies where they don't have to read the subtitles in japan like all of all of that is true for him he's essentially as as sean and amanda were talking about like making elevated noisy silent yeah. films but then when you have dementis who is the most loquacious character we've had in the Mad Max universe. Totally. It just feels out of place. It's it's so, it's so tricky. Like, I, I really want to talk about Dementos. Because on the one hand, like, I think Amanda was trying to say that this is like a re, like a redux of Thor, which I don't really agree with. Like, it's like I, Bad Times of the El Royale, that character. Which is a movie like, I completely forgot about when yeah. we were talking about it, but is the last time yeah. that he played <clears throat> a self-important bad guy. A, a, a cult a, leader. Yes, a, a, a monologuing. Snake hip. Yes. Low slung leather pants. Yes. Sure. That's Beautiful, ugly yeah. person. Yeah. And he's very, very good at this kind of performance. This one's, I think, a little funnier than Bad Times at the El Royale. Definitely. I, don't, I think that it being so funny and yet so 
kind of momentous and bound by the epic storytelling is a bit of a clash that is makes it the character a little bit hard not to understand necessarily, but to kind of wrap your arms around. Um, I, I think it's because it's such an outlier in terms of what these movies are. It Something felt off about it, even though I think what you were saying is right, which is like his character feels very contemporary, even if it was imagined 25 years sure. ago when he first started thinking of it. There's just major like modern fascism going yeah. on in his yeah. character where it's just like nihilism. Blaming the elites. Yes. I will give you all the things that you've longed mm-hmm. for. You know, it's these rich guys who are taking it from you. We're yes. going to do it. And then I, oh, what, what a surprise. I've lost control I've of the crown. I've run it into yes. the crown. Yeah. And also oh, the, no. this like persistent question that I have when I look at modern politics, which is like, why? Like, why do you want to be in power and what does it actually provide for well, you? And is it just ego? Is it desperation? Is it a hole in the center of your soul? The, the Dementis character is kind of is kind of the same thing. He's a stand-in for this like pursuit of something that won't make him happy. There, there's a couple things that are ha- like one. Every Mad Max villain is like a cult of personality kind of character, like Toe Cutter, Anti mm-hmm. Entity. Like this is, or, or Morton Joe. Like these mm-hmm. are these are like cult leaders, iconography, all this sort of stuff like that. When when Dementis gets that sort of with the red powder on him and he comes becomes like red Dementis, I was just like, yeah, this is this is like image is so important for this guy. His whole parachute cape thing, like all of it is incredible. But also he's like this this dark mirror for, for Max, right? He lost his family. Yeah. This is what happened to this guy when he lost his family. Um, Little sliding doors. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Get Gwyneth. Where's Gwyneth? <laughs> she would in not fit Max in Universe. a Mad Max film. Yeah. yeah. Um, I Actually, I want to see Gwyneth be like the villain in the next Mad Max. <laughs> I guess the Dementis' skincare, though, pretty solid considering he's just out in the wastelands, just sleeping outside. Yeah. This is one thing I wanted to say. I couldn't get through. Sorry, I mean, you had. No, 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 no. I, I, I feel like we three fair skinned people want to hear your I, SPF thoughts. <laughs> I think that there is a world in which this, the, the, they could have played Dementis. I, I think that I couldn't get over the nose. I, I, all I heard was the nose plays the yeah. entire time. Yeah. I, it felt like it was. Hey, I have an idea for this character. It's this nose. And then they shot too much of it and they were like, ah, let's just keep the nose or whatever. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. If he's just Chris Hemsworth and he looks like Creeps Chris Hemsworth, you kind of like, I get it. I get why this guy, like, he's basically like the hottest dude in the wasteland is driving this kind of cult of bike, bike lord. Like, we're going to take over every spot we come across. And I just, the nose just took me out of it. it. It would have been almost more centering if it was just like Chris Hemsworth with maybe a scar on his face or something. I got to disagree with you. I feel like, I, like the nose. I, I think when you, you look at the nose plays. He, well, the nose plays <laughs> and he's got teeth too. Like yeah. the teeth and the nose work for me. I, and his like hick, uh, like outback accent that he's doing. Oh, the, the, the accent's incredible. <laughs> yeah. yeah I mean, I, I, that may just be his real speaking voice. Yeah, I couldn't not, say. It's not. Uh, I think that most fascistic leaders are like a little bit ugly yeah. and that their physical appearance is a part of their rise to awful power and there has to be something about you that you don't feel good about look at the long history of terrible people yeah. who have dominated the world Not they don't look like Chris shows. Hemsworth yeah. yeah they don't they don't look like Chris Hemsworth and so I think that Hitler, actually uh, yeah. yeah you know you know Mussolini Hi, you know, you know, fascist, this whole pile yeah, yeah, on the list here yeah, yeah these are not yeah. beautiful yeah. men got it got it um and so, and they're certainly not built the way that Chris Hemsworth is built. But you can you can understand. That, so like, you're coming out with your hottest take of this movie is that um, you're not sexually attracted to, to fascist leaders. Uh, I'm not saying that. I'm what not a, prepared to, a, to, right. to put that on, on mic. <laughs> what a stance to take. I'm just saying the world is yeah. not physically attracted, That's a good but point. maybe emotionally attracted. And you know, like I think I feel comfortable psychologizing all these dead fascists. Um, <laughs> that that is animating their quest for power. Yeah. You know, that they feel less than and so they want to feel more than. And, and you know, the nose, you know, this, this is maestro too. I here's think it the, works. Here's here's a, a slight problem with this movie. <laughs> that though. nose didn't play for me. So we're, <laughs> whatever we are into this podcast and obviously are electrified by talking about Dementis, both as a character and, and as a performance. Furiosa. And the movie's called Furiosa. Yeah. This is a problem. I, I think you nailed it, which is that she starts out as who she is. And she never really changes. Now, she gets increasingly more reasons to want to seek revenge. She loses her mother. She loses her lover. She loses her arm. These are all reasons to want to yeah. get to vent- revenge. But she doesn't change. We also don't get to see those moments. Like, she, Jack dies 
we don't really in see it. Him. I know that's like yeah. he's getting dragged, so we presume he dies somewhere along there, but we don't see the moment. Yeah, we don't see the moment that she that her arm comes off. That's kind of a sick badass moment, though. So I wouldn't like lose it. The arm hanging, the arm just I hanging love there. I that's, loved it. It's awesome. Yeah, but like we don't get a moment for her to be like. And also, I expected and maybe maybe subvert your own expectations, but you know, then she loses the star map. I mean, I guess the idea is that she's memorized it and that's how she can find the green place later. But I was just sort of like, well, it's oh not no, gonna matter anyway. That's yeah. that's gonna be important like yeah. she's gonna lose that arm that has a star map on it I would like to see a moment other than like she screams in pain but there's no like anguish or mourning for the loss of the arm which Anya Taylor-Joy is incredibly capable of and and they don't they, we just have her like sort of leaning in a doorway watching the people eater move pieces around on and a board she's like, got it yeah and she's like okay here I go you so, know? Okay, so on the one hand, there's this obvious echo of the Max character by giving her so few lines of dialogue. Sure. Max very rarely talks in the Mad mm-hmm. Max movies. She is the hero of this movie. He's also movie. captured immediately in, yeah. in Fury Road. Like, yes. it's some, like he's already thrown into this, like, the first frame. Very similar framework. Um, you know, Andy Taylor Joy, I wouldn't say is, like, the most loquacious actress, but she certainly knows how to deliver dialogue. Yeah, she does um, a fair amount of talking in Queen's Gambit yeah. and stuff, yeah. Um, but she is an actor of a face. You know what I mean? Like her, her special effect, her superpower is those huge wide set eyes and this like very steely disposition mm-hmm. that she communicates in all of her movies. I just kind of wanted to hear from her a little bit more. <laughs> like I kind of wanted to hear a little bit more about, uh, I mean, it seems like she spent 10 years becoming a dog man in the Citadel, whatever that yeah. is. Yeah. Um, and that is elided. You know, we just like go forward into the future. Get the wig kind of turning. Yeah. yeah. That, that big moment. And so like, it just felt like there was a little hole where something, some some more Furiosa should have been. And I still don't know if she's really right for this part. Um, I don't know that I have a better idea for who should yeah. have played this character. It's really hard to fill the shoes of Charlize, who is, you know, this word is overused, but is iconic in Fury Road. Yes. That is a, a, a very memorable performance that is, if you like that movie, is burned upon your brain. Yeah. But I, I don't know if she totally hit for me personally. What do you think? Uh, I just think it's a tough part to play. Uh, I think I I was trying to figure out why I was like leaving the movie thinking all about Dementis and also being like, can we get a, a Jack movie? Can I can I get the, the, the <laughs> I would love yeah. Jack movie. Uh, and it, like basically like countering my bias there, but because you hate women. No, but but like it's you think bad they should to not walk be out of a movie film. called Furiosa and be like, but who I'm really into is Scrotus. You know, yeah. like yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, the the female character that I wanted more time with was her mom. Yeah, her mom. Her was yeah, mom was Brad. a badass. Yes, and Charlie Fraser, who I guess this is only her second movie, and and she was she's great. In she the was first in anyone movie. but you, right? Yeah. She was yeah. Glenn yeah. Powell's girlfriend. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a big shift. Although you know, would Australian you prefer Sydney Sweeney play Furiosa? Uh, no comment. Mm. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you guys can get in the I group chat they, about that uh, later. <laughs> um, no. I, Someone I know suggested Mackenzie Davis, but like she's I think too old at this point. Um, But but I I actually don't think Anya Taylor Joy is wrong. I just think for what George Miller wants to do, she does best when she's actually just there. Like because there's a scene with her and Jack where they're talking and they're having their like their tender touch greased foreheads together like sort of uh, quiet moment. Yeah, that's what Chris and I do after yeah, every horror movie pod. Yeah, we just go grease you to show, grease you on show the You show him the peach pit and you're just like, yeah, just like. One day we'll yeah. plant this inside yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. The group chat's going to be so lit later. Yeah. Anyway, but like, um, I, I felt their connection less there than I did when they were working on the rig together. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like through action, that's where his genius of storytelling is. So a funny thing, I mentioned this to Chris yesterday, Tom Burke plays Praetorian Jack. Wonderful actor, incredible in the souvenir. What 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 is he? Where do you know him from? I feel like I, the were... Hog movies, yeah. Oh yeah, um, Mank. Mank, of course, plays right. Orson Welles in Mank. Um, that part was originally supposed to be Yahya Abdul Mateen II. Yeah, which is really which different. would have been cool, but super different. Different vibe. They have a totally different yeah. energy as yeah. actors, and I like the idea. I wonder if we would have been even more interested in a Praetorian Jack movie if it were Yahya, because he's like he has more of a movie star's energy. Um, I loved Tom Burke yeah. in this role. I thought I, he was I'm awesome. I'm also a huge, like, where's my Praetorian Jack movie person. Um, but I would love to see uh, in this universe. Mm-hmm. I just don't know that I would switch out Tom Burke in that role. Yeah. It's but a, it's yeah, 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 one. like, in, as, like, again, one of those, like, like, 
decked out leaders of something, mm-hmm. that would be really. He's like, I don't ever want to see any blue paint again after yeah. Watchmen, but you know, <laughs> good point, good point. <laughs> but like something really, I don't know. Yaya as Scrotus. Oh, uh, that was they. They left money on the table mm-hmm. there. Yeah, I'm trying to. I'm trying to articulate the Anya thing. I don't think that she does a bad job by any means. I think that you, you guys have hit on it, where it's like there, there really isn't an arc to this character. And even though you could say traditionally the Max character in the films is a little bit of a cipher in some ways. Almost in each one of them, like in Mad Max, he's a family man who gets that taken away from her. him. In Road Warrior, he's a loner who eventually decides to become part of a community or to save mm-hmm. a community. In Thunderdome, he t- kind of tries to recreate his family with the kids. Leader of kids. And there's, so there's like each one, he goes from like loner to being part of something. And in Furiosa, she goes from badass kid to badass young adult. And that's it, you know? Yeah. And then, and then Fury Road starts, yeah. basically. Exactly. And I, what I love about the Mad Max arcs is that he's constantly, like, he's actually constantly going through that arc yeah. of, like, no, I'm alone. No, I I will help people. No, I'm alone. Like, I, I like that. I that's, can't be around people. Yeah. Like, you can't, like, I'm too I damaged have to leave. by this. I have to yeah. disappear into the crowd. I can't stay with the kids. Like, whatever it is. Um, But she's, so I don't mind that it's not, like, a straightforward Mad Max has been on this journey through all the movies. I kind of like that it sort of keeps looping around. But she's, yeah, she's just not on any journey. I was expecting, again, who cares about my expectations? But I was like, is Jack going to betray? Like, what's the big thing that happens that, like, sort of calcifies her? And I just don't feel like I got that moment. Other than seeing her mom get eviscerated, probably. Yeah, that's that's a... I mean, who hasn't? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that is... Uh... Homest among us. <laughs> well, I read... I don't know if this was true, but I read that the this story was also potentially originally conceived as an anime. Um, yeah. And oh. there's a... You know, that image early in the film when her mother is strung up on the tree where we get the close-up into the eye. Um, that is, like, the most kind of digital effect of the, of the film, but also really, really effective, like a good use of modern tools. But I think that maybe that's an energy that's in the movie that I don't have access to because I'm not an anime fan. And I wonder if maybe like some younger audiences, and I mm-hmm. think that the people who like this movie really like it. You know, I think I think it basically has the makings in part because of its underperformance at the box office. As a cult movie. As mm-hmm. a cult movie. And that we'll be revisiting in five years and then in 10 years and we'll be like, we didn't know what we had. We overlooked this, yada, yada. The same thing that we do and I do all the time on these shows. Like the sickos who think Beyond Thunderdome is the best Mad Max movie? That I can't abide. Mm-hmm. But we will get there very but shortly. The, it is like you can see the trend line of that movie go from like what a forgettable like weird tonally mismatched movie to kind of think it's funny I kind of like it it's kind of awesome it's kind of a Tina Turner and like Master Blaster yeah 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 Yeah. Yeah. Tuna Enter One Man Leaves like it becomes part of our like lexicon gotta let movies live past the opening weekend I I of course fully agree with that yeah um but I there is something about the storytelling style that does feel a little bit different in terms of its, not just its obvious scoping over such a long period of time, but um, how to, how to Joe, put this. Joe hit on it. There, There's a feeling in Fury Road where it's like he's been captured and he almost goes through the plumbing of that building, you know? And then he gets out and he's fucking running. You yeah. know what I mean? And that's yeah. that's where Mad Max movies are like... That's they just they, go and they come back. Yeah. That's that movie. And But Furiosa is, goes, comes back, C- kind of like screws around a little bit, goes, comes back, like yeah. is captured. Like there's just a kind of almost like the gears got to use a car analogy. Like something happens in the transmission of this movie around those acts that you're talking about yeah. where you're like, wait, I was getting into this. Yeah. Why are we? Right. There's wh- two wh- huge ones. There's the like, she's the dog man at the Citadel and then yeah. 10 years go by. Yeah. And then there's the 40 days war that we don't see. Yeah. Montage. And you're like, yeah. what? Is, was this like a budget issue or like what happened here? Or or was it just too much time to have to cover that you had to make these yeah, choices? Right. I can understand that. I or mean, is she not involved in the 40-day the war enough? Or is she? like? Yeah, She's building her arm she, that whole time. Yeah, 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 I guess so. Is that how long it takes to build a mechanical <laughs> yeah, yeah. arm? 40 days? Yeah, yeah. Okay. and 40 nights. It's like Porzingis' calf muscle, you know? They're just... Can you speak only in car metaphors for the rest of the pod? Yeah. Okay, great. As someone who really <laughs> yeah, definitely knows how to drive stick. Right? Yeah. 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 Do you think you do well in the wasteland? Oh, um, no. <laughs> <laughs> Chris? Yeah, I do. Do you? Yes. First of all, 
the interceptor, the black interceptor that he makes the, the last of the V8s, yeah. Yeah. is the coolest <clears throat> car ever made. It is sick. Um, so just like I would essentially be his Australian dog. Like I would just like sit like shotgun with a red mm-hmm. bandana around my neck and just like stare out the window. Would mm-hmm. we put a like bone in your mouth and tie a string <laughs> to a rifle and you would menace a I could be dog after. boy? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, you are uh, awaited in yeah. Valhalla. Yeah. I don't think that I would really want to live in any of the known fortresses of the wasteland. So okay. Gastown, Bullet Farm, or the Citadel. You're thinking more the maggot hole. That's I, good I for you. I was going to say, not, I don't think any of us None of our skin is made for. No, we're, we're we burn, right? Yeah, that's why I wear like my black, like full. I think yeah, we're you're in. Yeah. I think you're, we're, you're the, the. I think we're in the octoboss. maggot hole. Yeah. I think we have to be the lords and ladies of the maggot hole. Okay. Honestly, <laughs> <laughs> the number one podcaster in all of maggot hole. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I do want one of those gyrocopters. Yeah. You know, where they're like those guys are riding around on motorcycles, and then all of a sudden they're like. Zhoop! And they yeah, it's like a fan boat. I feel yeah. like that's a uh, short life expectancy, though. You think so? Whereas podcasting from the maggot hole, where you're just yeah. like, "Welcome to the watch." <laughs> <laughs> Maggots are crawling all over my body. A Morton Joe has renewed Ozark for season four. <laughs> Thank you, all powerful Morton Joe. Now I can find out what happens to Marty when he goes to Mexico. <laughs> Oh wait, I have a qu- I have a question about your about your pod spouses. How how do Andy and Amanda do in the wasteland? Oh, Andy goes first. Yeah, I yeah. think Amanda goes yeah. second. I don't think they're I don't think I don't think they're built for it. Yeah. If I'm being honest, I, I think I go third. I, so, I, I, I have some survival instincts in general, but I the sun is an issue. There's no yeah. doubt about it. Yeah. I need to be cloaked. I need that parachute cape wrapped over my face. I also face. personally have like a huge stash of Aquafina. Uh, so <laughs> after the big short, did yeah. you start sucking up on water? A little salty though. Aquafina. Yeah, but like better than than mother's milk or nothing, mm. you know? No uh, Fiji in the wasteland. No. <laughs> it's tough. <laughs> tough feet for big Fiji. Uh, Immortan Joe. Uh-huh. Yeah. Good leader, bad leader, good guy? Interesting characterization of him in this film. Different actor. Yeah. Oh, right. Okay, so that may... But Hugh also, Keys Burns burnt, was, was yeah. Immortan Joe, and then I, don't, I can't recall the name of the Do you guys know much about the, the, like, the character itself, like outside of the films, like in terms of its, its, its mythology? Are you, he, have you a, read all the comics? I've I've read some synopses of those okay. comics. Uh, he oh, is a, you're a such colonel. A wiki guy. I love this is he like a you. states' rights guy? A what cur- is, like, colonel what is... in the oil wars. Okay. Like, and so he's an ex soldier who finds the citadel by like one day he like captures a guy and is like about to kill him. And the guy's like, I can tell you where there's an aquifer. And so he and there's like a long like siege of the citadel of Joe getting in there. But that's how he. How does he get the respirator? What is that from? Uh, I didn't get to that part. Wasn't in the wiki. Okay. Yeah. How old is Immortan Joe? Immortal. Yeah, he's immortal. He's immortal. But it's like how how many years? I'm gonna is his guess body? late sixties when we're seeing him. Late seventies in in Fury Road. Yeah. Like. Okay. Yeah. I think you age faster in the desert, so I would say like fifties. But he's, in Fury he's Road pumping himself. Like, full but that dry of air, people. that's really good for me. You know, with all this post nasal <laughs> drip, like I really need that dry air. Got this it. is your why you need to move to Vegas. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I gas town. I think I could do okay. Gas town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And actually, you're really the gas guzzler guy. I know you're the guy who drill loves baby to just drill. fill up that tank. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's funny. Do you see yourself? What about at the Bullet Farm, like? Uh, it's a little spare. It's yeah. designed for me. Yeah. You know, a little. At Gas Town, you have to be like constructing replicas of water house paintings of nymphs on the wall. That's a good Is point. that something True. that you want to do with your life? It seems fun. Okay. It beats like racing around for my life. Honestly, like if I, if you know, the thing I would want to train to be is a Praetorian Jack. I would love to be out on the open road. I yeah. feel like there's some sun protection in the, in the grease. In the paint. greasing. Yeah. 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 What about uh one of the one of my favorite moments in the movie actually is the uh, Dementus's trick to break into Gas Town, where he scoops up what appears to be the wet cl- white clay that's yeah. I guess sitting just under yeah. the dirt at it all times. Makes time. it into a like yeah. a, a goop. Yeah, so yeah. that he, his his henchmen can resemble that's war dope. boys. That's yeah. uh, a really great good. sequence. But when when he's is that like, like make it re- and when he's like make it real now? Yes, yeah, and yeah, and then he kills, kills them all, men. and that's why the octopus is like, I'm out of here. Yes, we're gonna fly. A scene that. The first time I saw it, I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. And then the second time, I was like, man, there's like actually like not four set pieces, but six or seven set pieces yeah. in this movie that I hadn't totally realized. Is that part of your apology? Uh, yes. Sorry, George. There's more uh, set pieces. Not sorry, yeah. Amanda. Um, <laughs> but I think that that could be sunscreen. 
Oh, okay. Yeah. I think the war Oh, boys, like zinc on your nose, but like all yeah, over your... Yeah. Okay. And, and so, those guys notoriously like really mindful about their health. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They don't <laughs> get cancer at all. <laughs> Did you guys clock the guy with the um, the stripes on his head? Was the same guy. Oh, you haven't seen the fall guy. You've seen the yeah, fall guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you remember the drug dealer? That's yeah. the same guy. Oh. The drug dealer and the fall oh. guy is one of the you key seen the henchmen. Fall guy? I haven't. It's so good. This is why theaters are dying. Because of me? Bastard. Yeah. It's me? It's, it's not shit. any one person. Are you going to rent it on VOD? Like I, a cuck? No, I'm just not going to see it. Like a I'm just not. I refuse to see the fall guy. You won't watch it. Yeah. Is it you hate Emily Blunt? <laughs> They've centered her story. Is that the issue? Yeah, this is I an only actual two hander. Movies about women where women are de de emphasized. <laughs> it's good. The good news is there's a yeah. hundred years of cinema. The Odin for Kirk you. cut of Little Women. <laughs> yeah, it starts with like pa, and that's yeah. that's it. Okay, cool. I was happy for that guy, whoever that Australian actor is. I looked at his uh, IMDb, and he just made two films: The Fall Guy and Furiosa. Ah, that's, he's off to um, a great start. I was thinking about The Fall Guy a lot because of all the incredible sense in this movie. The Fall Guy rules. You yeah, should see it. I, I will see it. Well, okay. Some of the movie that is being made in The Fall Guy definitely resembles oh, yeah. The World Very, of Furiosa. Yeah. Yeah, 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 so yeah. there is a, an, an interesting echo that both of those movies ultimately have not really worked at the box office, um, even though they're both very fun. What else about Furiosa? What like what what thrilled you? What what didn't work for you? Um, I kind of want to talk a little bit about the climax of the film, the the the, the last scene between Dementis and Furiosa, uh, because it takes on like this much more literary, much more um, verbose kind of uh, denouement of like any of these movies before, really. Uh, and gives like, basically like makes flesh a lot of the ideas that are floating around in the like exhaust fumes of all of these movies. There it is, thank you. But is like both a interesting statement about like Dementis' psychology, but I think in a way like George Miller's. Now, I may now have at this point over-indexed for no matter what, when a great filmmaker makes a movie, there is going to be an essay about his own filmmaking in the movie. When we've been doing it with Mank and we do it with Fablemans and we do it with, we'll do it with Megalopolis and all this stuff. But I couldn't help but feel like when he's just like, I'm basically out here in the desert just trying to feel something, you know, if I'm paraphrasing Dementis. Mm -hmm that it sounded a lot like George Miller. Like, it's just like, what do you do when you make Fury Road? How the fuck do you top that? How do you find the thing? It's not 3,000 years of longing. Yeah, I'll it's probably that not that. <laughs> well, I, I, you mentioned that movie at the top, and that movie does feel very much in conversation with this movie too, though, because that is... Like a chapters. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah, the way that it's organized, but yeah. also this idea of like, kind of stories we tell ourselves to live, you know? Like, that is... That is kind of what sure. these movies and what his work and what his big ideas are about is we create these mythologies and then we constantly are trying to live up to them. And so like even a character like Dementis is like the only way I can get through my day and avoid my own, you know, Pain. inimitable grief yeah. is to seek something greater than myself. Yeah. And my version of that is power, death, destruction at all costs. Yeah. And you have to tell yourself this the same way that, like, the Tilda Swinton character has kind of vanished into, like, her own imagination because there are things that she doesn't want to deal with in the real world. And George Miller, who, you know, famously was a, a medical doctor yeah. before he was a filmmaker, who witnessed, like, some real pain Gnarly and trauma. Yeah, yeah, some really ugly things. And who brings that sense of, like, the physical, the, the painful physical into every movie that he makes. I just rewatched Lorenzo's Oil this weekend. Holy shit. Like a difficult movie to watch yeah. that is. And, the, you know, he's like, I to get through this, to make myself feel whole, I have to tell these stories. Yeah. Um, and it's interesting that he put those words into a character's mouth in that way in this movie. Yeah, and if you take Dementis as a stand-in for populist right-wing leaders at this moment and his the whole thing about, like, the difference between hope and hate, uh, I think that that was that was a pretty, it was it was like a unexpectedly profound moment at the end of a movie that is so hard charging and physical. Yeah. I think what's so special about the Mad Max franchise in general is this idea that like George Miller has had control over it the whole time. Mm. How rare that is! It's not it's not just like a Warner Brothers property. It's like George Miller has had this from you know scrappily fundraising to make it in the first place. My favorite bit of trivia about the Mad Max franchise is that. I think the only reason he has the rights is because he got fired off of contact. Jodie Foster ran her mouth in an interview and he sued 
uh, the studio and he got the rights to Mad Max as part of the settlement. So I was like, that's, thank you, Jodie Foster, <laughs> for Fury so, Road. such a fascinating <laughs> like, turn. It's incredible. I do want to see George Miller's contact for the record. That That is something I'm interested yeah. in. Absolutely. Is it all Jake Busey? Like, is yeah, it, is, probably. It's a, yeah. yeah, yeah, Praetorian Jake. Yeah, 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 Praetorian Jake. Love that. The teeth will play. Okay, so um, he, <laughs> so it's his story. So it's it's we're meeting this filmmaker wherever he is in his life and what's on his mind at that time. And you hear the stories about Thunderdome and the fact that he had to like basically half quit that movie because he lost Byron Kennedy, his producing partner, tragically um, in a hel- helicopter accident. And so like, like a man who has been grieving and a man who has taught himself how to make film and a man who has gone through the industry and made Babe Pig in the City and like all these other things is we getting to watch like, what does it mean then to make a film after you've made Fury Road? Yeah. And that's where we are meeting him in his filmography. And I think, I don't think there's another franchise that does that for a filmmaker. Like, I don't think we have another piece of IP that. Yeah, it's not, it's not like Jurassic Park. It's right. not like a lot of these films where it's just like, this really is this blockbuster personal expression. Yeah. Did you watch any of George Lucas's remarks at the Cannes Award acceptance oh, that he had? Um, no. What where did he, he say? was like, I hate franchises and stuff. Um, I, I sensed a, a, a touch of melancholy. I would say he's not amped tone. for the acolyte. I don't. I well, he didn't mention that title in particular. Okay. But um, I don't. I don't know. It's hard to say with those guys who've had this extraordinary success, who are legendary in their field of work, but who have like birthed something that feels very much like out of their control. Yeah. So Miller is an interesting. That's an interesting way to frame him as somebody who is ostensibly still in control mm-hmm. of the thing that launched him into the world of creativity. Really. And now I wonder, like, if does he give a shit that the movie didn't perform at the box office? Does he think I have to assume he thinks about that? I think probably only in in as much as it might prevent him from making another. I yeah. think that's the only yeah. reason. But like the way in which he hasn't fit into studio filmmaking or the film industry time and time again, and has been like fired or called difficult, or as Jody Foster called him naive or whatever it is, like that he is something very singular. Mm-hmm. And a lot of his movies, um, like. The Mad Max movies, certainly before, I think Fury Road is perfect and dead. But the Mad Max movies, or like Witches of Eastwick, a movie that I love, but don't really love watching, but love remembering. Does that make any sense? It's a great way to put it. There's like a little bit of an off-kilter nature to all of his movies. I watched Happy Feet for the first time with my daughter this weekend. Gotta tell you something, she didn't like it. She really had a hard time locking into those penguins. (laughs) Did you you take her to Furiosa, though? Uh, I did. She sat front row, and she uh, is now wearing the grease on her forehead. Yeah. Yeah. Um, No, she, and I think it's because um, he has, obviously, a a left-of-center sensibility in terms of the way that he tells stories, and that that movie is kind of an experiment. And then it became this weird freak breakout hit, kind of similar to Babe. Babe, It's a movie that was kind of an experiment and then became this weird breakout Oscar nominee and made a lot of money and then there was a sequel and there was also a sequel to Happy Feet in the same way. And so he's like able to simultaneously be idiosyncratic and also reach audiences in a unique way. His, yeah. his other movies that are kind of non-franchise oriented ultimately, which is V. Swick and Lorenzo's Oil, are very odd. And, and I agree, like kind of odd to revisit but are kind of like great YouTube movies where they yeah. have great scenes. Like mm-hmm. the cherry pit vomiting scene in which is V. Swick is, will stay with me for the rest of my life. Like there are just moments in Witches of Eastwick that are some of the best things I've ever seen. And I think I will just wind up thinking about Furiosa the same way. Mm. Where I will just remember the parts of it that worked really well and gloss over the parts that didn't. I don't know if it's going to be one that I will rewatch the way that I've watched, rewatch Furry Road or Road Warrior yeah. again and again. But I think it's a movie that I will think of more fondly as time goes on because I will just remember the war rig fight or the motorcycle chase or whatever and right, not think right. about her in the cage for however long she's in the cage or whatever, you know? Learning to read. Yeah. Yeah. Would you be a history man? I probably would. Uh, I probably, that would probably be the place. You're not a tattoo guy, right? Oh, I got two. Oh, you? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Yeah. Um, but I think that, I think probably that would be the best That means you can't go to job. heaven, just so you know. It does? Yeah. Yeah. No, it means you can't be buried in a Jewish cemetery? Is that what that means? If I'm tattooed or a history I, I honestly man? Don't know. <laughs> <laughs> if you can read? <laughs> Um, I do, you know, one thing about the franchise that I did want to ask you guys is, so it starts in late seventies, then you go 79, 81, 85, like he knocks these three out within seven years of each other. Uh, and they have an almost fucked up bond quality to them where there's like, 
a little bit of continuity, but right. for the most part, like the continuing adventures of this blank super driver out in the wasteland. Yes. Um, All portrayed by Mel Gibson. If yeah. I, what happened to him? What's going on with him? Hard to say. Uh, he also had some interesting experiences in vehicles. Oh, did he? Uh, so <laughs> Does something happen? I'm getting yeah. pulled over. I yeah. missed it. Okay. Uh, Bit of a piss boy himself, yeah. Let me ask you this. If I traded you three almost as good as Road Warrior movies every three or four years, but you don't get Fury Road, no. what would you take? No, no, no deal. No deal. No deal. Yeah, no deal. No deal. You didn't have to think about it. I was comparing Fury Road to like Lawrence, Lawrence of Arabia yeah, on the pod were. last week. Yeah. So, you and know, I agree with you. Yeah. Like, I think it's one of the most important and perfect movies ever. And it it is this culmin like Furiosa doesn't dim that at all. No. And it is this culmination of so no, many different things. And when you hear again to cite Kyle Buchanan's Blood, Sweat, and Chrome, I think one of the best like books about making a movie that we've had uh, in a long time. Um, like when you think about all the things that could have been with Fury Road when he was like maybe Eminem for Max or yeah. you know yeah. like all these like what or, ifs yeah. Yeah. or yeah, yeah. yeah. or yeah. Heath, well Heath Ledger is a better better case scenario but like uh, or, I like the idea of Chris having to pick between Tom Hardy and Jeremy Renner those are like literally yeah. his two boys I know <laughs> where are you would you want to see Renner's Max uh, I'm I'm happy with with Tom Hardy in okay. in the way that it it got even rendered, though he yeah. needed to be completely ADR'd entirely. <laughs> <laughs> with it, so it's a Tom Hardy yeah. movie. <laughs> Do you think that like Renner? I don't know what would have happened to Renner's legacy if he was handed Mission Impossible and that didn't work out, and he was handed Born and that didn't work out, and he was handed Mad Max and that didn't work out. That would be tough. He yeah. would still be the mayor of Kingstown. Yeah, let me tell you. Uh, and yeah, mayor of your heart. Is that I the agree. name of that show? Mayor of Kingstown. Yeah. <laughs> what season are they on? Three. What? Yeah. Keeping, have you been keeping up? Uh, I have more. I I I I watched half of season two and 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 tapped out, which is not an unfamiliar experience with Taylor shows, but. I see. You know, they start really strong. <laughs> but, but I think, like, Fury Road, there's so many things, a million things that had to go right to get it, and a million things that had to go wrong mm -hmm. to get it. Mm -hmm. And it's also a culmination of his, he, he's like James Cameron or Robert Zemeckis or, who, like, who are interested in technology. Yeah, and technocrat curious, geniuses. Yeah, yeah. yeah, endlessly curious in technology. And so Fury Road is just, like, the perfect version of that. And then Furiosa is just sort of, like, a bridge too far in some directions, you know what I mean? But like, no, I wouldn't. Would you trade Fairy Road for three Mel Gibson Mad Max movies in the nineties? I I to, to to paraphrase Bill Simmons, I'd have the meeting. Mm. You know, you take the call. Yeah, I you get you get your guys together in a room and you yeah. talk it out. Yeah, who are your guys? Well, I don't. I mean. <laughs> I, is, is Andy one of your guys? <laughs> Dementus? Uh, Scrotus. Lord Humongous. Wait, from Scrotus is definitely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Auntie from Thunderdome, yeah. yeah. Toe Cutter's there? Uh, toe Cutter, yeah. Okay. We get the guys together and we're like, what if, you know, yeah. make five of these badasses? Yeah. Uh, I, I do have a real deep affection, as we will talk about when we sort of rank these, for the elevated B movie origins of this franchise. Yeah. I do. And, uh, I, I love and appreciate and worship Fury Road and can't believe it's it, it worked the way it did given how it was made. But there's part of me that's like, I kind of, I do kind of love the like Australian outback grimy fucking grindhouse version of, of this story. Yeah, I do think that's probably a bit generational. Sure. Or if you saw a movie like that at a younger age, like I think this is a real like when when did you see the movie? Had yeah, to be there. in which order? Yeah. And that actually is before we rank the movies. Like the last question I wanted to ask. There's no way to actually know how you would feel about this, but if Furiosa was the first movie and Fury Road was the second movie in terms of release, would you feel differently? Would you you know like well how would that reshape? Like is that even a useful mm. exercise to? To, to put it in that context. Well, I mean, because obviously chronologically, yeah, you know, we can, you, we, it, it, you could basically do, you could do that now. Like you'd start watching. That's what I mean. Furiosa is a pre, you know, is, is uh, before you watch Fury Road. I mean, I effectively did that when I saw the movie okay. a couple of weeks ago, and then my wife and I rewatched Fury Road, and I was like, I think part of the reason why last week on the pod I was like, eh, this is pretty cool, was I was I just watched Fury Road, sure, and I was like, this is the movie. This is, yeah. you know, this is what's so great. You know, it doesn't, it shouldn't take away from Furiosa's accomplishments, but it invariably does. I, I think it was such a mistake 
And George Miller has said they went back and forth on this, but I think it was such a mistake, as you mentioned, to show clips of Fury Road at the end of Furiosa. I was yes. like, don't show me the masterpiece. That, that was yeah. a little bit oh, no. Rogue One going into yeah. New Hope, kind of, yeah. where you're like, oh, shit. Like, yeah. it's really cool, but you're also like, you know, uh, Star Wars starts. Is know? there a <laughs> world in which a de-aged Charlize in this movie is more effective than Anya Taylor-Joy? That world doesn't exist because Charlize wouldn't touch, I don't think would touch this with like a 30 that's foot the, <laughs> That's the other thing is like, They've got a, the other sort of uh, thing they have in the chamber is the backstory they wrote for Max, like the year before yeah. Free Row. But I was like, Tom, you burnt the Tom Hardy bridge. Yeah. There was you some suggestion the sh- over the weekend that he actually would go back to him for the next movie, which I find really hard to believe. I just don't think Tom would go back. Yeah. Yeah. Well, ever. and the Charlotte, there is like, I think either in comic form or whatever, like a written out like Furiosa at the Citadel, like kind of trying to protect it story you know like Mm -hmm. there is a sequel like or at least story for a sequel for for fury road but i don't think Charlie's theron is gonna do that what i think actually would be really sick is if uh furiosa wound up being a terrible leader because of what dementa says to her at the end of this movie He's like, you have become, you will become me, all that sort of stuff like that. And the fact that like there is a version of the ending where she keeps him sort of with her, this like shadow self with her, stuff like that. So what if once Furiosa rises up on that platform, it's like a beautiful sort of hopeful ending, but like who's to say she would be a better leader? If, If the idea of this world is power corrupts, there is no such thing as a good leader, which is sort of what George Miller said, then like maybe we don't ever want to see what Furiosa would do with all that power. I don't yeah, know. We call that the rise of corporate feminism. That is a movie I yeah. do not think would do well. <laughs> Furiosa turning bad. Furiosa becoming Marine Le Pen. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> not, not good. <laughs> yeah. It would be really interesting, though. And the kind of, like, honestly brave thing that George Miller would do. You yeah. know, like, he's not, he believes in the idea more than he does in, like, the fan service of making you yeah, excited sure. about seeing But the, I suppose if people were pissed that, like, Luke Skywalker moved to an island to, you know, yeah, I drink think they green milk, they'd be really mad. Yeah. became, like, a, a center-right a yeah. <laughs> parliamentarian. <laughs> Last Jedi, where are you at on that? Uh, you, you you know that I do not like that movie. Uh, Last Jedi. Oh, no, The Last Jedi. The Rise of Skywalker, I don't like. Oh, I like yeah. Last Jedi okay. quite a bit. I, I tried to trick you into something, and then you were like, whoa, you actually don't like it. Yeah, no. Um, you like Blast Jedi, and then yeah. you like Blast Jedi. Uh, Mad Max movie rankings. Okay. There's five movies. I, I feel like this is a bit of a chalky exercise, but I, I want to go through it with you guys. I'll, tell, I'll, I'll say for me, my least favorite of these movies is Beyond Thunderdome. Okay. Um, I think half of Beyond Thunderdome is good. But it, it, there's a whole other half. Yeah. I'm not disagreeing with you. Which I'm half saying. don't you like? The second half. The kids. The kids. Yeah. The Ewoks. Okay. I think everything through... Yeah. Trial Bar- by Barter Combat Town. Yeah. is is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. And then... And you would do great in Barter Town, I think. You think so? Oh, yeah. yeah constant deal, dealing and wheeling and like just oh, being yeah. like, I'll trade you two Blu-rays for, you know, a sippy cup of Fiji water and, <laughs> you know... Can you? No deal. <laughs> you've you've bore witness Spit in your hand. to, to you the love amount of contact with other people's I do. hands. Physical contact is something I'm really into. Uh, you Master witnessed... and or blaster. <laughs> yeah. like, which one? Who am I in this equation? Yeah, I was going to ask. Yeah, uh, I think master. Unfortunately for me, you've seen me negotiate with my child a lot over the last few days. That's not a fair like. That's not a, a, a that's a bad example. Like this, that sample size is poisoned. I've lo- I lost every single negotiation. Yeah. <laughs> You know, like, can I have one more cookie yeah. battle? Did, did wow. not, really did not go Can well. I tell yeah. a quick anecdote? Please. I bought his daughter a gift, uh, and I we purposely left it in the car for dinner because we were like, you know, we want to not distract from from the social component of of being with, with his daughter at dinner. So we were like, okay, we're going to, like, and at one point, Alice was like, I, I want to get up, you know, from the dinner table right now. And I was like, here's the thing. I have a thing for you but you just have to chill for like two minutes. And she just looked me dead in the eyes and said, I want the thing. <laughs> <laughs> and, and listener, I got she the got thing. The thing. Yeah. Yeah, she got the thing. Yeah. She, uh, it was a book. But still, yeah. like, I don't know if she's a Morton Joe or the people eater in this equation. But or she, Professor X. Because yeah, I was she, like, you know what? That's pretty adorable. Yeah. I'm going to go get it. Wow. <laughs> yeah, she's very powerful. Okay, so Thunderdome is five for me. Uh, it's not, is it, is that, that's not the case it for you? It is not the case for me. Is no. that the case for you? It is the case for me. Okay. Uh, Mad Max, the first one is five, but with, with 
all due respect, I just don't re- choose to rewatch it very often. Because you think the toe cutter's misunderstood? <laughs> <laughs> you thought it was... Because no, you I wondered what you deal. would look like with one eyebrow shave? I just think that uh, <laughs> it it's like, do you watch Straw Dogs a lot? Like, it has got, like, a darkness to it and a kind of, uh, like... Sounds like, yeah. Gritty. Too, I mean, well, Sounds like a great time. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> too, so, too, just too raw. Uh, I like it a lot. I, I think it is, like, the... It's like the black and white sketch of like what he would wind up okay. doing. Yeah. I think that's fair. Um, so does that mean Thunderdome is four? No, Furious is four. Wow, that's fascinating. I say, but this is not like a that shit at the bottom. It's like like these are five really little, good to um, little G good. Yeah, yeah. I think it's I think Furiosa is really good, but I think I have it at four. You think Furiosa is not as good as Thunderdome? This is this is a born in the 70s I shrugged, situation listener, in my sorry. mind. Yeah. yeah. Um, but he was like, but when I saw you earlier, you were like, I liked it. I love these movies. Yeah. This, is okay. what, this is probably... Yeah, yeah. You're bringing the right energy to this. I think Alien is, like, is my overreact. favorite franchise. Yeah. I think Mad Max is pretty high up there at this point. Okay, okay. Yeah. With, along with what? Divergent? Um, no, Maze Runner. Maze Runner. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Did Score, you support Score West Trials, Fall? Right? Yeah, seeing the monk, the, the apes film? That's what I did do. I didn't go see Fall Guy, but I will go see the cinema of Ball. Yeah. Okay. Do you know the Legend of Zelda? Uh, do I know like it's Link, right? And he's got to rescue her, right? <laughs> yeah, we 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 did that already. Okay, you you missed this this moment. I saw. I mean, I watched the clip. It was okay. really good. <laughs> <laughs> he said through gritted teeth. Uh, okay. What's your? Give me your. Just give me your rankings. Break it down for me. It's Beyond Thunderdome at the bottom. Then it's Mad Max. Then it's Furiosa. Then it's uh, Road Warrior, and then it's Fairy Road. So that's my list as well. Okay. Joanna, as is often the case, we are usually very aligned on these things. So do your five. Mad Max at five, Furiosa at four, Thunderdome at three, Fury Road at two. No! Let's get out of here. Road is, Warrior at this one. Is, this is great podcasting, but very chaotic. <laughs> I, what, what? You love Road Warrior, though. I love Road Warrior. Do you, have you told the story about how you first watched Road Warrior? Warrior? <laughs> I don't mom, know why I said that. Yeah. Well, my mom showed it to yeah. me. Yeah. How old were you? Uh, young enough that there were some disturbing elements to it mm-hmm. and that I got incredibly terrified of boomerangs uh, off of this movie. Yeah, the fingers. Um, love that part. But yeah, Road Warrior is is the original article in, in, mm. in my head when I think of this. When I close my eyes, I think of Mel Gibson uh, of driving the, the, the decoy tanker out of the, out of the community and being chased by Humongous. Okay, yeah. here's a good game. Road Warrior or Alien? Alien. Road Warrior or Star Wars A New Hope? Star Wars. Road Warrior or Jaws? Jaws. Road Warrior or The Exorcist? How like, I think Exorcist is a better film and more important. I probably have seen Road Warrior more. Which do you prefer? To watch? Yeah, Road Warrior. What are, what's another some iconic seventies franchises that shaped Chris's mind? I, you know him more intimately than I do. Your peach pit has been inside of him for longer. <laughs> It's some of my best work. I hope that moment is clocked <laughs> yeah. and, and clarified. Just me growing a tree <laughs> out of myself <laughs> and you being like, now I will pod. Was it a peach or an apple? It was, it was a peach. peach. It was definitely a peach. Because yeah. pi- apples don't have pits. When's the last time you had an apple? Uh, I, I eat an apple every day. Yeah. This is something you should know about me. Okay. My daughter eats two apples every day. Great. She is addicted to apples. Underneath that core is not a pit. I know that. Okay. But that that <laughs> pit doesn't come from the peach that she pulls. It comes from her mother. She hands her the, the pit. So like obviously the, the, there could still be peaches. Yeah, but, but the pit what, maybe it's a like a like a hybrid. She's like been a hiding post, the pit in her well, hybrid. I, I, I wondered that. Is there some sort of like a- apple mutant peach. fruit? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. That could be it. An each. Uh, yeah. It doesn't an e- it doesn't allied well. An each. An ap- a apterine. A <laughs> Can I ask you guys another uh hypothetical? <laughs> yeah. George Miller will make another Mad Max saga film, but this one is broken from the Citadel, Gastown, Bullet Farm. Yep. Saga this one is part. set at Mar-a-Lago. Uh, mm. No, but this one is more of a Vroom Vroom, Hour 50 B movie. Yeah. I mean, of course. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so you're question. not like each film needs to try and top Fury Well, I Road. like that about it. I made that note in the, in, in, uh, in the doc here. Like, 
each one of these movies is like iterative of the last movie and also a complete rejection of the last movie. Yeah. Like that's what the it seems to be like what gets him excited about making them. Yeah. So there would have to be something about the I'm, road movie that is different from what we've seen before. I really liked Amanda's question of like, what's west, what's west of Westeros? Like, what's happening outside of Australia in this post apocalyptic? I mean, future? I wonder whether or not. I don't know who owns this this IP, but in ten years, we're gonna find out. You know. Yes. Oh, that's kind of scary. My question uh, when I was thinking through Amanda's sort of proposition of like, what's happening elsewhere. I'm like, well, we're going to have to... Well, they have a lot of aircrafts, actually. Not long-distance aircrafts, but they've got some aircrafts. But yeah, I was mm-hmm. like, could we do Fury Road on a boat? What if what's happening is just <laughs> so what's happening? Fury Boat. Yeah, yeah Fury Boat. Fury, Fury Boat is a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> we need, and we need to amend the I don't speed know if it'll, to cruise control. Yeah, problem. and I don't know yeah. if it'll be as good as Battleship, but I think it could try. Wow, and they, Battleship. Dude. They did audition what are we Rihanna revive that? for... Yeah. <laughs> Should, does Battleship need to be reclaimed? No. You know who's really good in Battleship is Rihanna. Yeah. Yeah, Rihanna's great. (laughs) I agree. What is she? She's like, man the torpedoes. She's the weapons person on the boat. Yeah. Yeah. Rihanna auditioned for Fury Road, by the way. That would have been interesting. Did she? Yeah. As as Furiosa? Furiosa? I think for one of the wives. One of the wives. Okay. And she came in, uh, George Miller says she came in dressed as Rihanna because she didn't know what the movie was. So she just came as herself. I don't know. Like a rock star, I don't yeah. know. Like a, like what, a how was she supposed to come in? Like wearing like a like a, oh, a satiny oh, cloak, some some <laughs> muslin wrapped around her <laughs> yeah. body. I don't know. Interesting. <laughs> uh, Battleship is one of the worst movies ever. I saw so many bad movies during the pandemic. We had a bad movie club, and Battleship was by far. Here's the what worst. I don't understand about Battleship. I haven't seen the film in a long time, so I'm just yeah, kind of freewheeling I'm here. Just, Obviously, that's my guy who made that movie. It's a colossally bad movie. Yeah. Uh, why did it have to be aliens? What did you want it to be, Russians? Just other countries' battleships? <laughs> like when you're playing the game Battleship? Yeah. I don't like think it's not they like want alien it. battleship. I don't think they wanted it. was kind of like Top, Top Gun, Gun Maverick. Water. I don't yeah. think they wanted to wade into the geopolitical waters. Let's of like, make up a country. Yeah. I agree. I also wonder whether or not sonar has gotten so good. It's like, could you really get like snuck up on by a Navy? You know? It just reminded me that I was just watching uh, the interpreter, Sidney Pollock's yeah, film. Yeah. Have you guys seen that? Yeah. It's on Netflix, just fired up. Never seen it before. It's just cl- really? closing out my Sidney Pollock filmography viewing experience. Not, honestly, not bad. No. Sean Penn and Nicole A little Kidman. bit yeah. long, but good. It is a little bit long. Yeah. But uh, that's an example of a movie where they just invented an African nation because really... they clearly did not want to annoy, I yeah. guess, Zimbabwe. Mm-hmm. Um, so they just made up a country and it worked fine. And I was like, wow, this is a He seems like a bad guy. What's going on in Mobutu, I think, is the country? Can't yeah. Remember. So why don't we head to Mobutu and yeah. Fury Boat? I I think David Zaslav should call us and or George Miller can call us. Do you twenty years Zaz but on if, top on top of the Mad Max IP is tough. Is a tough when, look. When, I mean it won't be bad. When George Miller has gone to the, the great place of abundance <laughs> and David Zaslav is like, now I can get my guy Dune Colin yeah. Green Place. Uh all, all the men can get in here and but really, all the HBO <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say West Ball, but yeah. it could be worse. It could definitely it can, be worse. But like all the HBO Max shows that we're gonna squeeze out of this. Oh this my was God. almost a nineteen a mid nineties TV show. And they I, got I, close to that. I do, like I'm in usually, the Highlander vein. I'm you know? usually a grouch about that, but I could see that. There's yeah. so there's much a Night Rider here. version of yeah. the show. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. Where it's movie. just like mystery of the week. Yeah. Week. Yeah. Um, last question for you guys. Green place overrated? Well, green place meaning the place of abundance yeah. where well, we know that yeah. it's overrated. We know that it, you have to walk around on stilts and, and live in birds' nests there. So Furiosa. Yeah. I don't need a horse that much, you know. Really bad sense of like, you know, she's not a not a great leader when you think about it. She puts all of her eggs in one basket. Okay, well, here's the question: Fury, do you want to make Fury boat or do you want to make Furiosa colon bad leader? Like, I think Why not both. <laughs> Why not both? Get Aaron Sorkin on Furiosa's hardships of a, as a leader. Mm. That them be kind of like his I Love Lucy movie, but about Furiosa. Yeah. <laughs> are we, so we're like, are we walking and talking through the maggot hole? Yeah. Like, is that where being that the thing? Furiosas? That's a that's an idea for a movie. Yeah. I'm interested in that. Uh, guys, this has been great. Thanks so much for sharing your thoughts. You and it turned out that you're all kind of on the same page as me, which I was not expecting. I was expecting that to we liked this movie, like a huge th- thrum of enthusiasm, and you don't understand. But actually, I feel like we all are on the same page. This I, is I feel really like good. Just, I feel like it's just like the, the can pilled people. If this right? movie yeah. had started with and with Anya playing Furiosa as like a androgynous mechanic, yeah, I would have been like, you and we got did like it again. A, like vague 
occasional flashbacks to like. I don't care. I don't Baby care. I got yeah. it. I know. I know where she comes from because it's talked about in Fury Road. Like I know that she comes from this matriarchal like yeah. utopia. Right. I want to see her working on trucks, mm -hmm. and then she mm. realizes like she's the prince who was promised when it comes to driving. Is that a thing for you? Like a woman building a machine? Is that <laughs> is that appeal? I'm just saying that's an hour and fifty minute version of this movie that's sick. Okay. Fair enough. Any closing thoughts? I would not cut <laughs> the Volvolini <laughs> from this movie. Yeah. I think the chase is like arguably the best thing in the movie. The motorcycle chase? Yeah, yeah. I love that part. I would, good. I yeah. would not say Fury Road is not the best Mad Max movie. Um, <laughs> you, you brought but, it. Yeah. But I would look forward to seeing how each of you would thrive in the wastelands. I really, I mean, yeah. just podcasting from the maggot hole yeah. is just... I love that for you. I bet it smells great in there. Valhalla awaits you both on The Watch, Chris Ryan, yeah. on Trial by Content, on House of R. What are you, are you, are you guys are prepping? And we are going to be You're prepping for something special. We're doing Talk the Thrones yeah. on, on, on the House of R feed, and we'll be we'll doing that visually as well. George Miller's directing. How? <laughs> I've quit five times. <laughs> There's a lot of speed ramp, like yeah. just like zoom in on Chris on the pot on the like on the mic, you know. Uh, I'm never in 24 frames. I'm either slower or faster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who's driving this pod? It's Chris. Did you reread before this new season? Fire and Blood. Yeah. Yeah, but that's easy. Oh, that's crazy. Did you? And you've already rewatched re as well. Yeah. And what about you? I just Ron Burgundy it. And I'm like, he reads the wiki. Aemon Targaryen. And then, and, then he goes, and then he goes, what's a dragon? Which dragon's that one? Uh, we would, Mallory and I wouldn't have a job if Chris did all the reading or yeah. watch all the stuff. That's our job. I'm the common man. In, in so man many ways. <laughs> in, in, truly, in, in so many ways. Like a man who just wants to see Anya Taylor Joy yeah. build a machine <laughs> and explain, have ex dragons explain to him. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, people. <laughs> Thanks for yeah. being here. Um, Thanks to our producer, Bobby Wagner. Thanks to Jack Sanders and Corey McConnell on video. Later this week, Chris will be back. Amanda will be back. We'll be building the Richard Linklater Hall of Fame. What's your number one pick in the Richard Linklater Hall of Fame, Joe? Um, that is such a good... Uh, Where'd you go, Bernadette? <laughs> <laughs> I'll find a way to defend it. Uh, Daisy and Confused. Daisy and Confused. Great choice. All right, we'll see you then. 